start midweek again when we come to you with the word of God and uh, the revelation that God will be putting to us. And we thank you for following our Olives Online TV. Thank you so much and I hope you are well and in the comfort of the Lord. We always mention the comfort of the Lord because we cannot survive outside the comfort of the Lord. We appreciate his love. Thank you so much once again. Um, you might be going through some problems and some challenges. You might be facing some times that you, you don't celebrate. And you might be in a situation that you are not comfortable with. But I'm saying find comfort in the Lord and the Lord allows every challenges to come your way so that you come out victorious. And at the end of the day, God is victorious and his name is glorified. We appreciate the love of God and whatever we are going through and whatever you might be going through, it, it is for a purpose. Paul says, I, I'm pressed but not crushed. So everything that is happening to you now, it, it has got a purpose. You need to, to ask God and you need to be patiently wait for God to, to vindicate you and see some good results coming out. Remember, everything worketh for good to those who love the Lord. When you are a believer and uh, you believe in the Son of God, you will definitely have victory. And victory is already, is already authored on the cross and uh, whatever is happening to you, victory, you have it, but it hasn't manifested. So we thank God for that. Today we want to, we want to encourage one another and we want to speak about the miracle that Jesus did on the, on the wedding at Cana. You know, we, we have to find out how it happened. And the Bible says uh, there was a wedding at Cana and Jesus was invited together with his mother and his disciples. There he performed a miracle. But uh, it was the third day. The Bible says it was the third day that Jesus came and performed a miracle. So we want to talk about the third day. So when we talk about, when we say the third day in the New Testament, it is very important in the New Testament. Remember when we say New Testament, we're talking about the New Covenant from the Old Covenant. So the New Covenant was established upon the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the third day. So the third day simply means it was the day that every, everything was wrapped up on the resurrection of Christ and everything was wrapped up. The victory that we are celebrating today was wrapped up on the third day. So the third day simply means the resurrection day. So we want to thank God about the third day. When Jesus rose from the dead, he had conquered the sting of death. He, he, he came out victorious and he, he, he went to sit at the right side of the Father. So the Bible says we are seated together with Christ. We are seated together with Christ in the heaven realms. So it's important that the resurrection actually brought this permanent victory and we, we have the internal life. And when we are in Christ, we are never condemned. We, we, are, rest, we are assured of the eternal life. So before we go to the, to the miracle at the wedding of Cana, we want to take you back to chapter number one so that you understand the background and where we are coming from. The Bible says John was baptizing. And verse number 20, the most common verse where people says, Behold the Lamb of God that carries away the sinful nature of the world. So John was baptizing and Jesus was coming to be baptized. Uh, to be baptized because he was also a man. He was now in the, uh, in the world of the living. So he had to be baptized so that his righteousness will be, will be completed. So he, he was going to, to John to be baptized. So John said, behold the Lamb of God that carries away the sinful nature of the world. So he was telling people around that I've known him as the Messiah because it has been confirmed. So when he was explaining that, uh, the Bible says after Jesus was baptized, he then decided to go back to Galilee after being baptized. He decided to go back to Galilee. So before he, go, he goes back to Galilee, the Bible says, verse number 43, chapter number one, the, the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and said unto him, follow me. Now Philip was, was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip went to find Nathanael and said unto, unto him. So when Jesus went to Philip, Philip decided to find somebody called Nathaniel to explain and to show him the Messiah whom the prophets had written about. So the Bible says, verse number 43, 
Philip went to find Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him. We have found him. We have found him. To, of whom Moses in the law. Moses in the law. And the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. You see, look here. Philip is just defining uh, Jesus, not as the son of God, but as the son of Joseph. As the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, you know, to Philip now, because Philip was said, we have found him, we have found him, whom the prophets and Moses were writing about in the law, in the law. They were writing about Jesus Christ. So we have now found him, whom Jesus, whom the prophets were, were pointing to as the Messiah of Israel. So, but then Nathaniel said to, to, to Philip, um, can there anything good that come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, come and see by yourself that he is. So the Bible says, Jesus saw, uh, um, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said unto him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile, is no sin. So after that, Jesus decided to go back to, to Galilee after he has, he has spoken to Nathanael and to spoken to Philip. And Nathanael had denied that the, the Messiah cannot come out of, uh, out of uh, Nazareth. There's nothing like that. Uh, but Philip confirmed that he is the one whom the prophets and Moses had written about. So as he was going to, to Galilee, the journey to, from, Galilee, from, from, from Galilee to Cana would take two days. It was a two days walk. Remember, they were, they were walking from, from one place to another. So they would take two days before they get to Cana. So on the third day, he arrived in Cana. And the Bible says when he arrived there, there was a wedding in Cana in, 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 in Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Was, she was also invited together with the disciples. And on that very day, when Jesus arrived on the third day, on the day that that the, the miracle of resurrection was performed. The, the third day, the third day. You know, this scripture, was, Jesus performed this miracle before he resurrected. But we are talking about the miracle that Jesus did. And I said the third day, why the third day? In, in the New Testament, we say we value that third day because it is the day that Jesus rose up from the dead and Jesus being the firstborn of resurrection. So when you go to this wedding, the mother quickly ran to say, they have no wine. And he came on this particular wedding. And when he got to the wedding, the wine got finished. The, then the mother, Jesus said, and when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto, unto him, they have no wine. They have no wine. Listen, look at the answer that Jesus Christ gave on verse number three, verse number four. Jesus said unto, unto his mother, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. You see, the language that Jesus is speaking here has nothing to do with the request that they have no wine. And why did the, the mother of Jesus say to Jesus, they have no wine? As if he was the one who was going to provide wine. So Jesus, between Jesus and the mother, the, the, there was, a, the, the, there was a, a, a secret there. There was a revelation that needs to be, ex, to be exposed. Now, his mother said unto his servants, after Jesus had said, my hour has not yet come, the mother left Jesus and went to the servants and said to the servants, whatsoever I said unto you, do it. Whatsoever I said unto you, do it. So Jesus said, woman, why are you saying I must, why are you coming to me to say their wine is finished? I have nothing to do with this. I have nothing to do with the finishing of their wine. I don't have nothing to do. Then, because my hour is not yet come. Why? Your question and the, the question and the answer, you know, is pointing out something different from the wedding at Cana. It's totally pointing to something else. So he said, my hour is not, which hour is Jesus talking about? Let's go on verse number 11. Which hour is Jesus talking about? The Bible says, after Jesus, after Jesus had refused, the mother went to the servants and said, do as whatever he has told you to do. And, and there, the Bible says, verse number four and six, and there, were set the six water pots of stones after the men of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three first kings apiece. And Jesus said unto them, fill the water pot with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. 
when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water, look, when the, when the, when the ruler of the feast, the governor of the feast, had tasted the water, not the wine, had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servant with which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. No. So now when the mother said to the servants, go and do what he says you must do. And the mother had finished about Jesus. And Jesus was worried about the his time that it did not yet come. But within that period, within that, that period before his time has come, he had to perform a miracle. Be between that time, the, the, the time between his time and the wedding, he had to do something for the, for the bridegroom, for the, for the bridegroom at his wedding. So the servants had to get some water. He says, just fill in some water pots. The servants had to get some water. And Jesus said, Jesus never went to the water pots to do something. The Bible is silent about it. Jesus just said to get the water and fill the water pots. After filling the water pots, he says, take, draw the water out of the water pots and give it to the governor. The governor must, would have to start testing whether the wine, everything that would come to, 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 to the wedding the governor must test first. So when the water was given to the governor, it turned to be wine. And he, he further complained, why are you taking out this pure wine, this sweet wine, later after, after we first drank the wine that was not up to standard. So the bridegroom was called and to answer the, the governor, but he knew nothing about the miracle. So what I'm saying here is, he said, take, take the water and pour into the water pots. And the mother of Jesus said, do as what he has said. You might be in a situation. You might be in a situation. You might be in a situation. And I said the third day, you might be in a situation where you don't understand where things are coming from, where things are going. And your, 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 your function of life is dried up. Everything seems to have dried up. Finances seems to have dried up. And marriages seems to have dried up. And everything seems to be dried up. You don't have anything. You don't have anything to take from. But I want to tell you, there is an instruction that the mother of Jesus gave to the, to the servant. He says, she says, do as what he has said. Whatever he says, do it. Don't, don't, don't ask many questions. You see, so when you want to have a miracle, you know, you must act it sometimes as if you, you are not normal. You, you know, you don't have to question so much. When the word of God says, do this, just do it. You know, because many people, we, that's where we miss it. We, we want to use our logic and want to understand why. We ask sometimes many questions, why? And sometimes we ask God questions and we don't get answers about what we're asking for. So the mother of Jesus says, whatever he says, she says, whatsoever he says, whatsoever, whatsoever. If he says jump, just jump. Because whatever he says, do it. Because the mother of Jesus understood that Jesus was not just an ordinary person, he was not just an ordinary man. He was not the son of Joseph, but something happened for him to be conceived. Some, there, was a, there, was, there was a revelation, there was something deep about, uh, about the birth of Christ. So the mother of Jesus knew that this one would solve this problem. So whatever he says, just do it, because he is not like any man whom we see here. He is not ordinary. He is divine. And Jesus is the only person who was 100% divine and 100% man. So the mother of Jesus said, whatsoever, whatsoever, even if he says, kneel down, just do it. Whatever he says, just do it in order for, for us to get wine here. And wine could come anyhow, anyway. But Jesus said, draw some water, draw some water and get to the, the, the governor of the feast. And when the governor of the feast tested, he complained. Imagine something that, was, that had run out, but it was taken out of water and it became number one wine. So whatever the word of God says, whatever you might be going through, whatever you might be going through, just do what the word of God says. So imagine when Ezekiel was asked by God to speak a word to dry bones, if it was myself, I would have a lot of questions. 
you know, I would, I would apply my, my, my knowledge of, of, of biology, my, my knowledge of uh, anthropo anthropology, the study of men, of men. My, my, my knowledge of, of, of knowing how five senses work, works, sense of hearing was not there. And, and sense of smelling was not there, and every sense, sense of seeing was not there. But God says to to this to I, to to Ezekiel, speak to the dry bones and say to them, hear the word of the Lord, hear the, to the dry bones. Imagine these things that are, are, are miraculous. You, you, you never understand if you want to use your logic. Whatsoever He says, do it. And whatsoever he says, do it. Whatsoever he says, do it. So whatever the word of God says, we, we must do it. Just do it and believe that the word of God will come to pass. So Jesus said, woman, what do I have to do with thee? But in the meantime, in, the, in that time when he was waiting for his time, he had to perform a miracle. He had to deal, before his crucifixion, he had to deal with matters. You know, before, before the new covenant was, was done, he had to deal with the issues. On his way to, to the cross, he had to deal with issues. On his way to the cross and on his way to, to the grave and before his resurrection, he had to do something. So the third day, his resurrection power had already come into effect. The third day had already come into effect. So I want to tell somebody who's listening here, whatever you might be going through, just, just stick to the word. The word is very powerful. What it says will, 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 will come to pass. And, and it is life in it. The Bible says, uh, Jesus says, I have come to give life and not just ordinary life, but life in its abundance. So, so when he performed his miracle, the bridegroom did not understand what was going on. And he was coming now to answer for something that was miraculously done. He didn't understand where the wine came from. In actual fact, maybe he didn't under understand that the wine ran, had ran out. But the mother of Jesus now said, go and see this man to take out the shame because it was going to be very shameful for a, for a wedding to run out of wine. It was a shame. You know, uh, there's nothing that, to, that would British bring shame as running out of wine on a wedding. So the mother of Jesus was very concerned. The other people who said, she said Jesus was closely related to the, the, to the bridegroom. So she wanted to remove fame, but to, to, she wanted to remove shame. But how did, did she remove fame? She referred that to Jesus Christ, the burden bearer. So Jesus can deal with any shame. He can remove any shame. He can remove those who are looked down upon, you know, those with low self-esteem. Jesus can deal with you, you know. You need to, 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 to be referred and you need to refer yourself. You need to, to put all your burden to Jesus Christ and he can remove that shame. We, you know, there are a lot of people who are, who, who are, who are, who are into shame. You know, they, they have given up. They would say there's, not, there's no way they can go because the wine in their life has dried up. But I want to tell you, this man Jesus we are talking about today, this man called Jesus Christ, the man we are talking about there, he has risen from the dead and he has the power to rekindle your life. He has the power to make, to make your life again. He has the power to make your life sweet again. You know, many have lost hope and many have blamed themselves. You might be the one who's blaming yourself. If you could have made some mistakes in life. You could have made some errors in life that you think they've brought shame to your life. You, you, you are so embarrassed and you don't think you can make it again. But I want to tell you that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ on this particular wedding removed shame because this, this bridegroom was going to be ashamed. At the, after the end of the wedding that there was nothing there, the, the, the wine ran, ran, ran out. But I want to say, you might be leading a shameful life, but when you, when you do what the word of God says, do. Because it says faith comes by hearing. You are to have faith that you'll have it again. You'll make it again. You'll have it again. Many people, they have discouraged themselves. Many people, especially when you're a lady, maybe you have messed up yourself. You have eloped instead of getting married, properly married. Maybe you're a, you're a young man, you're a man. You have done something that you think have brought shame to your life. But I want to tell you, Jesus Christ can remove that shame and bring glory to your life. If verse 11 says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed him. So the purpose of Jesus refusing, saying my hour is not yet come, 
because he was not yet prepared to go out public as the Messiah. So I want you to I want to read chapter number chapter number seven. Chapter number seven, verse number twenty-five. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is it not this he whom they seek to kill? Verse number twenty-six said, But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? This is the very Christ. How bad we know this man when he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth where he is. So this chapter now is now confirming that the time that Jesus was pointing to was the time that he was going to be betrayed, the time that he was going to be crucified. That's the time he was saying, my time is not yet come to have this public announcement that I am the Messiah. Because Pilate says, when Jesus was crucified, he says, this is the king of the Jews, whether somebody likes it or not. And they question Pilate, why are you calling him? Jesus is the son of, is, is the king of Jews. And they said, no, he's not, the, he's not our king. He proclaimed, he's self-proclaiming that he is the king of the Jews. Then Pilate says, what I have written, I have written, I don't, I don't reverse. What I have said, I've said, because I've seen that this man is the king of the Jews. So he removes shame. This shame we're talking about was, was the shame of this wedding. You know, imagine at your own wedding, everything runs out and people have just come in their numbers. Imagine after the wedding, people would leave your wedding with different stories. Some they don't speak good, they'll start to speak bad about your wedding. So this is the shame that was being brought on this man. But the mother of Jesus said, please don't worry about what the, about the running out of the of the wine, go to this man and do whatsoever he says you must do because he removes shame. He removes shame. He removes embarrassment. He removes the things that you think people would look down upon you. So I want to tell you today, you might be leading a shameful life. You might be regretting, but don't regret because he is, he removes. He, he himself, he removes. Because that's his ultimate purpose. He came as the grace. So he came as grace of the Lord. He did not come to punish people, but he's come to remove shame. Because when he was going to the cross, he was stripped naked. He was everything was taken out of out of out of, out of his body. And shame was brought on him. And we cannot live, continue to live in shame because shame was carried on the cross by Jesus Christ and he nailed it on the cross. So somebody cannot shame, say, I, I, I have shame, you know, I am cursed and so forth. No, you are not cursed, but for as long as you are in Christ, you have this power that, that lives in you. You have this power that lives in your mortal body. The same power that raises Jesus from the dead is the same power that functions in you. You need to understand that when you are in Christ, you have this power that functions in you. You need to put your mind right you need to put your heart right you need to understand that you you are never lost you are for as long as you are in Christ you know there are so many stories that you hear you know people some people they believe that uh, I'm cursed um, my dead uncle is doing this to me but when you are in Christ now you'll never be ashamed you have this kind of victory and the victory was completely authored by Christ when he, he rose from the dead and he became the first fruit of resurrection so this power that we are in now is what is called the resurrection power and in this resurrection power everything is wrapped up it everything is wrapped up there we find everything in this resurrection power the power that raised jesus christ from the dead it can also change your life you know we need to believe that this this power now this power that was in christ is is, is, is this power that was in christ changed the water to be wine and it can still change your life to be a good life and it, you have that assurance of the eternal life but life of this world you need to believe and you need to be to, to believe that i am what i am because that's what the word of god says says so mindset your mindset must be must be changed you must renew what you call metamorphosis you know a change from one state to another you know your mind has to change to believe that for as long as i am a son of god i'm a daughter of god i am in christ in christ in me i'll never be defeated i'll never be brought to shame you know because whatever whatsoever he says do it 
whatever the, the word of God says, do it. So we, we question a lot about the word because we don't understand our position in Christ. You know, we have victory that has been authored by Jesus on the cross. We have victory that has been authored by, by, by reason of Jesus rising from the dead. And everything, up, everything is wrapped up, I, say, I keep on saying. Everything is wrapped up on his resurrection. So study the word and believe that everything that you are running out of, Jesus has got it all. You just need to believe the word. You know, I, I remember when Jesus said, when he came to, to the Bethsaida, to the man with 38 years of infinity, infinity, he says to him, do you want to rise up? And he starts to say, I don't have any man who brings me, I don't have any. So when you are a believer, you don't blame people. You say everything works for good to those who love the Lord. God, take me to my destiny. God, my wine has ran out. I, I need you. I need, I, I need you to fill up my water pots. I need you to fill up my water pots. Your water pot will be filled up. You know, you, 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 it might be going to write down. But if you do whatsoever, whatsoever the word says, do, do it. If the word of God says, fast, fast. If the word of God says, give, give. So that your, your water pot will be full. There are so many things that will make our water pots full. You know, you must be a worshiper. Always, wherever you are, worship the Lord. Wherever you are, sing this worship song. Wherever you are, learn to give. Wherever you are, learn to be patient with other people and learn to be, to be soft, learn to love other people. You are making your water pot full. You know, Jesus Christ himself said to people who crucified, forgive them, they don't know what they are doing. So you also need to forgive. Because when you stand up to pray, the hindrance to prayer is the spirit of unforgiveness. You don't forgive people. You have this kind of bitterness, and that's what keeps holding you back. So I want to say, whatever the word of God says, do it, and your pot will be filled to the brim. You know, it doesn't matter the shame that that the running of wine intends to bring to you. You know, there are a lot of things people don't want to be ashamed. You know, they don't want to be ashamed. Paul says, "I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of the risen Lord." So, thank you so much for for tuning in. But I want to tell you. You might have gone through difficult times, you might, you, which you think they've brought shame to your life. You are never ashamed. God has got a purpose with you. God loves you and he, he has good plans for you, not to destroy you, not to harm you, but he has good plans to prosper you, he has good plans to make you who he wants you to be. So you are a son of God and you can make it. I want to give you hope you can make it. I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about God's vindication and God giving people hope. And I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the power of God. I'm one person who went through challenges, but here am I. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you courage and just be courageous. You know, the Bible says to Joshua, God said to Joshua, I will be with you as I was with Moses. So be courageous. You know, you, it only needs people who are courageous to, to get to, your, to their destiny. You can get into a shipwreck like what Paul did. He was in a shipwreck, but he never he never, he never threw in the towel. You know, he never gave up because he knew the Lord was with him. You know, when the Lord is with you, when you have invited the Lord in every function of your life, definitely never run dry for anything because Jesus was there. This is why Jesus was invited and he got there on the third day, on the third day. You know, you must always remember that the third day in your life, the third day in the New Testament, in the New Testament means the resurrection of Jesus Christ and everything was wrapped up. Everything that we need was wrapped up in his, his, in his resurrection. So we need to thank God that we, we are what we are by his grace and never give up, never throw in the towel. You know, you will need Jesus in the function of your life. May the good Lord bless you and make you well and uh, make you victorious already. You are victorious already. You know, some of these things, when you begin to study the New Testament, when you begin to study the finished works of, or the finished work of Calvary, you begin to understand that some of these things that we cry out for are already given unto us. Some of these victories that we say, God, we demand victory, we have got it. We are already walking in victory. When you are in Christ, you are walking in victory. There's no weapon formed against you that you shall prosper. There's no demonic force that will come after you that will win because you are victory already. You are victory because you are in Christ. Keep, keep, keep it up and be in Christ always. May the good Lord bless you and keep you well. And I, I, I hope 
you'll get over your problems and you'll get over what is haunting you. Just remove it in your mindset and say, I belong to Jesus and I love Jesus and Jesus is with me. Whatever I desire, I'll get hold of it. So keep well and keep guided. Keep watching, keep following us and uh, thank you so much. Wherever you are, you might be anywhere. You might be out, outside Zimbabwe. You might be in Europe. You might be anywhere. Keep well and trust in the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Keep well. May the good Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Jesus.